Prepare to be transported to the captivating era of the 14th century as we delve into the life and legacy of Murad I, the powerful Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. Welcome back, history enthusiasts, to Turkic Tales. Today we are thrilled to embark on a captivating exploration of the life and legacy of Murad I, the third Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. Born in 1326, Murad I ascended to the throne in 1362, following in the footsteps of his father, Orhan. Under his rule, the Ottoman Empire witnessed a period of remarkable expansion and consolidation. Join us as we unravel the extraordinary tale of this influential figure shaping the destiny of the Turkic people. Without delay, let our journey begin. Murad I, the third Sultan of the Ottoman Empire, was born in Bursa in 1326. His father was Orhan Ghazi, and his mother was Nilufer Hatun, the daughter of a Byzantine prince who converted to Islam. Among the Ottoman sultans, who often faced illness during military campaigns, Sultan Murad I stood out as one who truly sacrificed his life in battle. He was referred to by the titles Hudavendigar and Ghazi Hunkar, meaning chief or master in Persian and veteran ruler in Turkish, respectively. In honor of his memory, the Vilayet province centered in Bursa was named Hodawendgar until the end of the Ottoman Empire. In the Ottoman Empire, every prince received education and guidance from an experienced statesperson known as Alala. Murad I's tutor was Lala Sahin Pasha. At a young age, Murad I was appointed as the Sanjak Bey holding military and administrative command over the district of Bursa. This early experience provided him with valuable knowledge and skills. Tragedy struck in 1359 when Murad, the first elder brother, Suleiman Pasha, died in a hunting accident. As a result, Murad Dhrush became the heir to the Ottoman throne. In 1362, after his father's passing, Murad I took command of the army in Rumelia, and ascended to the throne as the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire. He married Gulkicek Hatun, the daughter of Kandaroglu Suleiman Bey, who was possibly of Greek origin. He also married Tamara, sister of Bulgarian King Ivan Shisman, Maria, daughter of Byzantine Emperor Ioannis V Paleologos, and the daughter of the Bulgarian Prince of Kustendil for political reasons. Sultan Murad had five sons and four daughters, with some of them marrying rulers from different regions. Sultan Murad was deeply religious and showed respect to scholars and Sufi saints. He regularly gave alms to the poor during Friday prayers. He was considered a saint by the people, and there were stories of miracles attributed to him. One such story tells how during the siege of Pleven, he expressed hope for the castle's destruction, and shortly after, a wall collapsed with a loud noise. Sultan Murad, faced both internal and external challenges during his reign. Suppressing the first Shahzada revolts in Ottoman history, he solidified his authority within the dynasty. Expanding his empire, Murad conquered Ankara, Eregli, and Edirne, formerly Adrianople, which became the new government headquarters. In his quest for Balkan dominance, Murad waged successful campaigns in western Thrace and southern Bulgaria separating regions and gaining recognition from the Byzantine Empire. However, the Byzantine-Venice alliance posed a threat, leading Murad to focus on defending Ottoman territories in Rumelia. Despite these challenges, Sultan Murad left a lasting legacy through his conquests and strategic leadership, setting the stage for further Ottoman expansion in the future. The unstoppable progress of the Ottoman Empire raised concerns among the Christian world, with the Byzantine Empire unable to prevent it. The Serbians, Bulgarians, and Venice found it challenging to resist the Ottoman forces, except for the Hungarians, who sought to Catholicize the Balkan people. In 1364, an Ottoman reconnaissance unit led by Hatsi Ilbey launched a devastating night raid near Edirne annihilating the combined army of Hungarians, Serbians, Bosnians, and Wallachians, known as the Rout of the Serbs. The victorious Ottomans seized Ceres and Biga, expanding their control over Byzantine-held territories. The Republic of Ragusa accepted Ottoman suzerainty to safeguard its trade routes. The Ottomans gained popularity among the people of Rumelia, 
with the Greek patriarch praising Sultan Murad's tolerance towards Orthodox Christians. This period of peace allowed Sultan Murad to embark on infrastructure projects, including soup kitchens, lodges, mosques, madrasas, and cultural centers in Yenisehir, Bursa, Edirne, and Belesik. Bursa flourished as a prominent hub of knowledge and culture in the Islamic world during his reign. As the Byzantine Emperor John V Paleologos sought support from Europe in vain, the Ottomans continued their advance. In 1370, they defeated the Serbian and Bulgarian alliance in Samokov, opening the gates to northern Bulgaria and capturing Kjostendil. This marked their entry into Serbia. Another blow came in 1371, when the Serbian and Wallachian forces suffered defeat at Sermon. The Ottomans seized the Macedonian gates, resulting in the fall of Drama, Kavala, Bitola, North Macedonia, and Kosovo. Dissatisfied with their own rulers, the local population embraced Ottoman rule. Ottoman raiding units even reached the Dalmatian coast. The Serbian and Bulgarian kings acknowledged Ottoman suzerainty in 1372 and 1376 respectively. Significant cities like Nice were captured and the Ottomans continued their conquests, including Sofia, Prilep, Ohrid, Bitola, and Škodra. Amidst this expansion, internal struggles arose. In 1385, Shahzada Savci Bey rebelled against his father, Sultan Murad, in Bursa. However, he was defeated, captured, and executed in the battle on the plain of Keta. These events shaped the course of Ottoman expansion and revealed the challenges they faced both externally and internally. Ali Bey, who ruled the Karamanids and was married to Sultan Murad's sister, made a foolish decision to attack Ottoman lands while Sultan Murad was busy fighting in the Balkans. This narrow-minded action prevented other Anatolian regions from prospering like the Ottomans did and eventually led to their disappearance. In order to make peace, Ali Bey's wife approached her brother, and Ali Bey himself humbly asked for forgiveness. This wise approach allowed the Ottomans to expand their influence in Anatolia. Sultan Murad understood the importance of diplomacy. He treated cities that surrendered with respect and guaranteed their rights through special edicts called a hid name. Additionally, he formed an alliance with Barkuk, the Mamluk Sultan of Egypt, because both leaders faced a common threat from Crusaders. Even though Ali Bey later tried to negotiate with the Crusaders, he still feared the Ottomans and ended up participating in the Battle of Kosovo a few years later. Sultan Murad's diplomatic skills and military strength played crucial roles in the growth and success of the Ottoman Empire. In 1388, a Serbian-Bosnian alliance breached a treaty and defeated the Ottomans in Plashnik. Hearing of this, European crusaders gathered an army to expel the Ottomans from the Balkans. In response, Sultan Murad ordered a full-scale invasion of Bulgaria. Despite initial setbacks, the Ottomans emerged victorious in the Battle of Kosovo in 1389. The battle, lasting eight hours, solidified Ottoman dominance in the Balkans and shaped the region's future. It was also the first battle where the Ottomans used cannons. Before the battle, Sultan Murad prayed for martyrdom, and it is said that he was stabbed and martyred by a wounded Serbian knight, Milos Obelik. His temporary tomb became a sacred place and a symbol of Ottoman power in Rumelia. Sultan Murad's body was later brought to Bursa and buried in the mosque he had built. His martyrdom deeply saddened the Islamic world, with Egyptian Sultan Barkuk sending gifts to honor him. Sultan Murad's martyrdom left a lasting impact on Ottoman history and the hearts of Muslims. Thank you for exploring the fascinating life of Sultan Murad I with us on Turkic Tales. Stay tuned for more captivating episodes as we delve into the rich tapestry of history. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below.